Now that's what I call power. Hi, welcome to Life is Mimi. And today we're going over the fourth aspect of God, which is infinite intelligence. Infinite intelligence is also been called the Akashic Record. It's also been called the One. It's what Edgar Cayce would um, tap into when he would lay down and get, get his readings. As we discover from Edgar Cayce's story is when he was doing it for others that if it wasn't from love he would get very ill and he ended up having to have his wife and uh, trusted others go, go between him, those who were asking and himself before a question would be taken for a reading. So, you know, you always err on the side of love. Infinite intelligence guides you in all ways. This is what you tell yourself. This is an aspect of God. Infinite intelligence guides me in all ways. You know, and one of the things you need to understand is there's literally two brains and one is just pure love. Okay, it's a love brain. And the other is split in two and fighting this objective subjective battle okay and the one up here the big one is learning so the baby's learning through the imagination this is the triangle you know in the eye and to pull these two together through imagination and this gives him the eye and what uh, the super secret is, the Holy of Holies is, what science discovered in 1991. And I read about this back then, and uh, it, I just found it really fascinating because before that, in the 70s, um, my brother went to the same school as uh, Dr. DeBakey's son, and they were invited to um, come see this uh, heart transplant, and we went. I was driving, and uh, so we went, and we got to talk to him afterwards and ask questions. You know, and I asked the question, "What was the most unusual, you know, thing that he, you know, had come across in, in these transplants?" And he said, well, you know, sometimes they wake up and want the strangest things and the things they've never had before. He goes, but that fades over time. He goes, but it is, it's just an unusual thing. And I don't know what, it's, what it means. And um, that had stuck with me. And then I had read the article in the Scientific American about uh the discovery of neurons in the heart and Greg Baden talks about this as well and these this is the heart the brain in the heart the consciousness in the heart this is this is this is the spot okay so when you're touching your head going think 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 you know you're automatically looking at the good and the bad and thinking this way when you touch your heart, you're automatically removing yourself from this to the divine. This is where the divine sits. And it's funny because, you know, I was thinking about this video and we had a phone call of FaceTime with my son and my two little granddaughters. And I wasn't really in the camera very good, and uh, one of them, where are you, Mimi? I'm like, here I am. I said, where are you, Brindley? She goes, here I am. And Mackenzie goes, here I am, Mimi. <laughs> and we were all touching our hearts, and I just, you know, oh. So it, it's, this is where uh, 
infinite where you ask for the infinite intelligence and then it comes down into your mind okay this is the loop and this is the string theory between is neurons picking strings to other neurons okay it's, it's just another way of saying it and it's really a beautiful thing to understand this is the I am okay this this got laid down so you could shape it and everything that ever was or ever will be went on one side and this one was blank okay and the human imagination just making those stories doing a great job of it you know and it, Neville Goddard said there's no predestiny and he's just wrong if he had gone within and asked infinite intelligence and if he had fully, you know, thought about it, think, think it through, you know, that's impossible. He was destined to meet that woman. She was destined to plant that seed. He was destined to always love the Bible. He was destined to be on Barbados. He was destined to see how ducks taste like fish if you don't feed them yummy stuff for two weeks beforehand. He was destined to experience all those things so that he could be what he was supposed to be, what he was supposed to play. And he was happy. Okay, everyone has to look at their life and sometimes they get confused and think I'll ask infinite intelligence, you know, what my purpose is. And your purpose is to do what you love. And if you're not sure what that is, then you go into exodus, you go think about it. Okay, and for myself, you know, and I know I've shared some of those with some of y'all, so bear with me. But, you know, just from my own experience as the example, you know, I was born with a leg that was horribly scarred. And it wasn't really horribly scarred. It was a black birthmark. My leg worked perfectly fine, thank you very much. But it was horribly scarred in my mother's mind and her fear and the doctor's fear because they always saw purple or red birthmarks not black ones that it was going to become cancer so we got to cut that sucker out <laughs> and she gave in to that and I almost died from that and she had promised me in the womb if I came out as a perfectly fine baby not you know not burned from the x-ray and perfectly fine that she had had while she was you know unknowingly pregnant then you know she promised this baby to God well when she started trying to interfere with that you know because she got a baby that was perfectly fine had a black birthmark but was perfectly fine you know then God went to take the baby away you know and she said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have messed with her leg, I'll never mess with her leg, I'll never mess with it again, it's perfect, it's perfect, it's perfect, and so, you know, I was saved, and they ended up scraping off what they had done, and it, there's a scar there, and I, I had to live with this scar, and I really didn't notice it until I went to school, and other people pointed it out. And so I was always uh, living with that. And the victim bully, you know, about that. And that only reared its head a few times. I was mainly a quiet watcher. And pretty much did whatever I wanted. <laughs> I studied journalism and got to be at the women versus men tennis match in Houston and interview both players there and that was fun and uh, you know my life as a child uh, they had said I couldn't read my parents said I don't think so taught me phonetically so you know I'm looking back at my life 
and it's I've always loved words and my parents throughout my life you know from the time I was very small was always saying you know say what you mean mean what you say and I, you know I was always having visions and frankly talking to dead people and telling them about it and I know it freaked them out so my brothers and sister don't recall them saying that but they said it to me constantly say what you mean mean what you say okay <laughs> you know? and some people call that being naive you know and I I just would say you just talk with a forked tongue say what you mean <laughs> and so I studied words and I've always loved words and then it got into entertainment and theater and music and dance and song and you know all that and I was going to be a star <laughs> I was going to be the best character actor ever that's what I was going to be and you know that ended up going kapoey and so then I go to college like my daddy wanted me to and I really didn't want to but I had suffered enough and said okay I will and go to college and meet the love of my life and fall back into you know victim bully land and work my way through that the love of baseball the love of entertainment never left me you know but being the star left me and then it was being the mommy and now it's just you know being the word and that's been my purpose all these things I was destined to experience the good the bad and the ugly all of it so that I could bring the word to you everyone who watches this I am the word come to life I'm a shining beacon of the Lord and infinite intelligence is at your disposal at all times I know when I say I am I am speaking for God God and I are one Rita is a role she's a role okay Mimi is a role it's it's a role for you to identify with I love being the Mimi. I love being the Mimi. The best Mimi I can be. You know, and just having fun and sharing the love. And now that, you know, I have been realigned with my purpose, I didn't ask Infinite Intelligence to, to tell me that. You know, because the answer I got when I did was think about it. So then, you know, when you look at your life and you realize, you know, I have loved words all my life. I've been typing and writing all my life. You know, I've been studying entertainment all my life. I've been studying crowds all my life. I've been loving markets and crowd psychology and networks and computing all my life since they entered my life. I was dreaming of the internet before the internet came to be with the reference librarian when I would call her, you know, <laughs> which I did all the time. You know, these are the things you look back at and you see. Uh, this is, I'm doing my purpose. I'm doing what I love. And it's great and I love it. And everything works out great, you know, and this when you're not doing your heart's desire you're killing off this brain where infinite intelligence resides and you can't access it when you got yourself all mucked up with the good and the bad and everything you have to touch it and go to silence immediately that's how you immediately go to silence touch your heart and then call upon whatever divine aspect you need and in this case infinite intelligence and infinite intelligence will give you the answer 
You know, which one's speaking the truth? I don't know the answers to these questions, but I, I know you do. Thank you, you know, for giving me the right words to say. And just go and do it. And hear everyone say, you know, you did great, you did great. And it, you will. You'll do great. You know, it's, you're a beacon. You're a light. You have to open the channel between this brain and this brain. You have to get these neurons and these neurons sinking. That's where synchronicity comes from. You're sinking this. These two. Okay. This is man's brain. Okay. This, this one. The one that's fighting good and evil. You know, there's, there's no evil. This one, this one is the one. There is no evil. There's only love. There's only divine, intel, infinite intelligence. There's only divine love. There's only life. There's only one life. Okay, it's all wonderful. So, you know, I hope this helps. You can tap into that Keshek record anytime. Whatever you want to call it, infinite intelligence, the one, you know, right here, it's right here. And when you touch your heart, you instantly stop thinking with this mind and you're going to this one. Okay? And just relax. And if you're in a spot, you know, just real fast, thank you, Father. I know whatever I need you're providing right now. Infinite intelligence guides me in all ways. Thank you. And then go. Okay. And go with it. And it'll all work out great. So I hope this helps. Blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Spike! Someone's disengaged the safety. Who's that? It's Kafka. And she's thinking. She's using what she knows. Terminate her access. Everything I told her about Satellite 5, the pipes, the filters, she's reversing it. They're dying. Look at that. It's getting hot. I said terminate. Burn out her mind. Walking around every day playing games and taking scores.